Aries, welcome to your January of 2015 horoscope. My name is Athen. So we've got a lot of emphasis on your work, career, and public sector this month, your 10th house. It starts off with Mercury going in there on the 1st to join up with Venus. So relationships for the majority of the month up until the 21st, 22nd, excuse me, when Venus is in there. So relating, exchanging, Mercury will be there all month. So thinking about it, learning, teaching, sharing, lots of that active, active energy in that 10th house sector and also in terms of relationships and developing those as well. Perhaps developing relationships at work. But I'm getting a sense of needing to balance uh, your home and family sector, especially this month. Uh, Mars is opposite Jupiter right there on the 1st and then again we're going to have another opposition with Venus and Jupiter on the 19th from your 10th and your 4th house. So what this is giving me the indication of is that this month very important for you to merge these two aspects together as much as you can. If you're overemphasized in work, you're going to notice that the home and family and also your emotional attunement is, uh, is out of balance, is, is not uh, being fulfilled. And vice versa, if you're focused too much on the emotional family, you know, home sector, then your uh, work might suffer. So it's about this whole month is about balancing those two areas together. And the way to balance them is to is to bring them together. See how you can make your work more connected to your feelings. Is your work enjoyable? Do you enjoy it? Um, maybe, you know, how can you bring your family into work in some way or your home into your work, making your work more at home? Bringing those together is going to be a strong emphasis this month, certainly. Now, on the third, we have the sun going over Pluto. So this is the last of the fast-moving planets going over Pluto that you heard me talk about back in November. So this is stripping away restructuring, rebuilding, uh, transformation in general. One last transformational uh, aspect in regards to your life path and your overall ninth house activity is where this is taking place. So travel, long distance matters, um, anything that expands either your physical or spiritual uh, horizons, which can also have to do with the new philosophy, learning about um, spiritual studies, these types of things. If there's anything like that you're involved with or university, this is uh, transformation and change in that sector, also traveling, anything else Sagittarius. But overall, a change to your life path and another shift this month uh, early on on the 3rd, but it's the last of it. And this whole month is a sort of action-oriented month with some squares that I'll talk about. So it's, uh, it's almost like right at the beginning of the month with that emphasis on work and career, this is when you're starting to notice the new opportunities that are coming to you not only in that public sector, but in all areas of your life. So it's important for you to make changes where necessary. That's essentially what, uh, what we can do uh, best with a Sun conjunct up to Pluto in the ninth. Now on the fourth, we have Mars going into Aquarius, which is your 11th house. So I think you're going to be motivated by um, group activities, perhaps even hanging out with friends or anything humanitarian or innovative this month from the fourth onward. So put energy into that. I think you'll find that very enjoyable, very motivating as well into those things. Be active in that 11th house and that'll help uh, really boost up that overall uh, motivational energy. Now on the 5th, we've got the full moon taking place in your 3rd house in Gemini on the 5th. So this is illuminating the, the, the exchanges and communications. This is what I'm getting a sense of this month is really emphasized in terms of your thinking, your consciousness, your, your communications, learning, teaching, these types of things. So for those of you that are involved in some sort of learning activity or pursuit, this is a high time for that. It's a high time in terms of manifestations, your greatest learning uh, coming to you, uh, wisdom being gained or overall, uh, you know, a graduation of sorts of the information. Um, but in general, it's just a high time in terms of how are you communicating and reflect on this on the fifth, really see how your communications have improved. Notice how important those communications are. 
so that when the moon shifts into the next sign in the following months, you can take what you've learned this month in regards to communications with you. And also in terms of how important it is to be very clear in terms of your intentions and your consciousness. Are you thinking clearly? Are you thinking you know, realistically? Are you thinking positively? These types of things. It's a very strong manifestation house there with the full moon. Now on the 10th, we've got Pluto squaring up to the North Node, and this is the overall energy for the month. It's going on all the way through the 16th, so right in that first part of the month there. Um, and this has to do with a restructuring to your path, and this is what's been going on with this whole Pluto-Uranus square, and now Pluto's going to go exact with that North Node. So from the 10th through the 16th, it's important to, again, like in November, take the active role and make changes. I think... With the new year, there's a lot of motivational energy that can be put into making your life, being very clear about your intentions with that full moon in Gemini and shaping your life the way that you want to see it in the long term. And use this month as a stepping stone to do that. Now, if you notice that it's not coming totally easy, well, it just means you have to be a little bit more adaptive like the bamboo versus the oak tree that gets unrooted very easily. You want to adapt, make any changes you need to make, and they could be very fundamental changes to your very being, which is what Pluto signifies. Now on the 14th, we have the Sun going into Capricorn. So in terms of your 10th house, this is when things, I think, start to really become illuminated and vibrant and enlightened, uh, especially with the creative side of it and your passion. I think there's going to be a lot of passion and excitement there. And that's going to take you into uh, February as well. Now on the 19th, we've got Venus opposite Pluto. So again, needing to balance home and family in some way. Very important here. I think this might have to do more with your enjoyment at work. I think you're really going to be enjoying it. But then you're going to have to, you know, again, see the, um, see the potential and opportunities that are taking place in your home and family sector. And if it's not home and family in particular, it's your emotional state. Are you connected to your work? Do you enjoy what you're doing? Is that inner abundance there? Now on the 19th as well, we've got Uranus uh, conjuncting the south node on the, uh, from the 19th all the way through the 21st, so for these three days here. And this is releasing any past ideas of spirituality. Um, also, not needing to hide away you know, I'm getting a sense of with the South Node transiting your guys' 12th house is to make sure you're not retreating. Make sure you're not, you know, use, using things like spirituality or philosophy and stuff to kind of hide away. It's very important that this month you come out of your shell and you focus strongly in terms of, uh, like I said, changing your life path. And here's the thing, with this whole life path stuff, that North Node is in your 6th house. So it's very important that this month and for the entire year, that you maintain good health, you're focused on self-improvement, and this is improving both your physical, mental, and spiritual, and emotional well-being. Making sure you're eating the right foods, getting the right sleep, um, you know, having an expansiveness in your spirituality, having presence, all these things, but actively putting it into your life and taking steps. It's very important for you to come up with a very good um, structure to your life this year. Structure your life so that your routine's in order, you're, you can enjoy what you want to enjoy because you have the time to do it. So focusing on restructuring your, your routine and also on your overall self-improvement is really the big signifier for you this whole year. But this is the month to really start to implement those things and I think it has to do with coming out of your shell a little bit, coming out of some old overly emphasized 12th house things with that south node there, you know, perhaps hiding away, etc. Now also on the 19th, we've got Mars then going over Neptune. And so this is about whatever you're doing in this community, group, or innovative level, I think really enjoying that. Uh, on a deep spiritual level, you know, there's a spiritual connection here. And this is when you can really um, find that spiritual connection to your uh, friends as well during the uh, 19th in particular. Now on the 20th, we have the new moon in, in that Capricorn. So this is when I think things, there's a new shift here happening this month in terms of your work and career and anything public. I think it's a new understanding, okay? And it's a new understanding of this balance between the emotional home and the work stuff or public stuff. So reflect on the 20th, see what that new beginning is, and I think that's going to set you off into a new direction, a minor direct direction perhaps, but a new direction nonetheless 
in regards to your work. Or it could be major too. I mean, it just depends on where your personal planets are. This could mean new work, shift in your work, a promotion, things like that. The 21st, we have Mercury going retrograde in that 10th house. So through February, it's going to be a reflection time period in terms of your work. You know, is it like, I, I'm just getting a strong sense of, is it fulfilling? Do you enjoy what you're doing? And if, if not, what, there's always a level of it. There's always a level of improvement that can be had here. So how can you bring in more enjoyment into what you're doing? How can you bring in more success, more achievement? Are you getting the achievement and respect and accolades that you deserve in your work. These are the things you want to think about from the 21st onward and learn about them and start to implement them by going, you know, by going with the flow in that learning process. Whenever Mercury's retrograde, it's not so much not doing something as much as it's treating it like a learning experience and be willing to make mistakes. Now on the 22nd, Venus then leaves that 10th house, goes into your 11th. So this is when things really start to become enjoyable with the friends, groups, community, anything you're doing on that humanitarian or innovative level with that 11th house with Mars there. So with Venus through February, enjoy those things or that thing, whatever it is you're doing, group project, what have you. You'll find that very fulfilling. Then to close this off on the 31st, we've got Mars conjuncting up to Chiron. So again, something feels pretty good in terms of the groups and overall community related stuff this month. All right, Aries, so let's go ahead and draw a card for you. See what the uh, what spirit has in store okay virgo well there it is that's where the north node is that's the sixth house it's about self-improvement taking care of yourself taking care of your health having that refinement having that sense of self where it's self-nurturing you know it's very important this whole year and this is a really important month in terms of shifting that all right aries i hope you have a great month thanks for watching if you'd like a personal reading you can click the link below for the youtube discount and i'll talk to you next time